Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining tonight's live town hall meeting. Hosted by Douglas County, this is our 64th live town hall. We'd like to welcome all of you who showed up in person and the dozens of you joining already online and on the phone. You probably already know that Douglas County continues to rank among the healthiest counties in the nation year after year. With that in mind, you might wonder, what is the role of your health department? As we stand up our own local health department, that is based on your needs. We are excited to provide an update tonight. You know, it's been really exciting to uh, be part of this journey. Obviously, Douglas County was part of a fairly significant public health collective for many years that began in the 1966 flood when Douglas County was under 10,000 people. Uh, as part of that significant public health endeavor, we saw a lot of great things happen for our community, but no doubt uh, over the course of COVID-19, the pandemic, uh, it was highlighted for this Board of County Commissioners how significantly important it is to have a public health department that reflects your needs and demographics. Uh, part of the, the directive to our staff and our new staff was to identify a way to remain uh, under budget uh, which was about $2.5 million on an annual basis for Tri-County Health, uh, as well as just maintain continuity of services and no gaps. I am thrilled and very thankful to be joined by Mike Hill, our Director of the Board of Health, as well as uh, several experts and my colleague, Laura Thomas, to talk a little bit more about this tonight uh, and identify the fact that they have done exactly that. Commissioner Thomas. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's here in person and online. In 2021, Douglas County Commissioners made the decision to stand up our own health department. Our Board of Health and staff immediately went to work to find out what you wanted in your own local health department. You gave us a lot of meaningful feedback that led to our public health improvement plan and three core priorities for public health services in Douglas County. That being injury prevention, disease management and prevention, and mental health. And let me just add, having served as the elected Douglas County coroner here in Douglas County for four years, those three topics did not surprise me because when I signed a death certificate, they often were for those three topics. Today, we're excited to share an update on how that plan is being implemented. And we wanna take your questions, Roger. Thank you, commissioners. Again, we wanna hear from you tonight and take your questions. To ask a question from your phone, press star three on your keypad and you'll be transferred to an operator who will take down some basic information. Once the operator notes your information, you'll be returned to the call and can listen to the conversation until it's your turn. Since we'd like to hear from as many people as possible, we will limit all speakers to one question. And when it's your turn, if you're on the phone, I will call your name and ask you to repeat your question for our live audience. If you're participating online, you can also participate online by visiting douglas.co.us forward slash town hall, and you can enter questions there on the website. And finally, if you're here with us in the room tonight and you want to ask a question when it is time for in-room uh, questions, please raise your hand and one of our commissioners will bring the microphone to you. Please be sure to speak into the microphone so everyone in the room, online and on the phone can hear your question. Mr. back to you. Thank you, Roger. And before we dive in, I'd like to take a brief moment to introduce to you Michael Hill, I'm sorry, Michael Hill, our new health department director. The Board of Health hired Mr. Hill earlier this year. Mr. Hill has nearly 30 years of local public health agency experience, leading significant programs in California, Texas, Florida, and Illinois. He has both managed existing health departments and started new agencies. Prior to his appointment in Douglas County, Mr. Hill was the health agency director for the San Luis Obispo County Health Agency, leading a public health department, behavioral health department, animal services division, and the office of public guardian with $120 million budget, more than 800 employees, serving 280,000 residents. Mr. Hill holds a Master of Public Health from the University of South Florida, a Master in Public Administration from Florida Atlantic University, and a Bachelor of Science in Biology from North Michigan University. 
He is a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives, board certified in health administration, and is a certified health education specialist from the National Commission for Health Education Credentialing. Mr. Hill, we are so excited to have you here. Welcome. Commissioner Layden, would you like to get started? Absolutely. So we'll start with some background and hearing room questions. Uh, and we can begin with a question that was submitted online. Uh, Alex asks, what is the status of our new health department? What services are currently available and what is it costing Douglas County? Mr. Hill. Thank you, Commissioner. So <clears throat> currently we started first providing vital records services. So birth and death certificates became available in our county for the first time in a couple of years. Tri-County moved those services away due to the pandemic. Then in July, we started the emergency preparedness functions along with the epidemiology, so disease surveillance, monitoring for any new cases of disease in the county. We'll be doing reports out to you to show you what diseases are happening in the county. Then September 1st, we took over environmental health, which is about 80% of what Douglas County consumes from a health department. So environmental health includes things like septic permits, uh, restaurant permits, tattoo parlors, child cares, other things. Am I missing things, Ms. Gappa? Okay, she says I hit the high point, so that's good. So we we're doing right now, I'd say about 85% of the services that we'll end up doing by the end of the year. But between now and the end of the year, we also have to bring on the WIC, the Women, Infants, and Children's Supplemental Nutrition Program that's currently provided by Tri-County till the end of the year. We're also gonna be moving clinical services out to another provider by the end of the year. So a lot of, a lot of little things still to come, but the bulk of the health department is up and running down at 410 South Wilcox. Great. And I also wanted to uh, just make sure and, and reemphasize, I know we stated it somewhat at the beginning, but we also uh, have uh, Caitlin Gappa, the Assistant Director of Environmental Health from the Douglas County Health Department here, and our esteemed colleague, Doug Benevento, uh, who comes to us with a lot of background from both the EPA and state CDPHE, and who is now the President of the Douglas County Board of Health. I just wanted to acknowledge you both as well. Appreciate you being here. So uh, I'd like to go out, and we have some people here uh, in the gallery with us. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Sounds good. Hi, I'm Dennis Huspin. I'm a reporter from the Denver Gazette. Um, I understand that uh, there could be a heavy para debt that will be left over once uh, Tri-County closes. What is Douglas County's monetary responsibility when it comes uh, to that para debt that you possibly could owe? Great question. Actually, Dennis, we're prepared for that answer. I'd like to introduce Chris Pratt from our county attorney's office. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, that was well-timed. Um, so the question that, that has been posed, I think on social media and in other places, and I understand the community is interested in is, is will this new health department have uh, any of the para liabilities as Tri-County goes away? Um, there are some costs to the retirement and future and, and existing retirement for their employees under the para program. And the answer is for our health department, there are absolutely no costs uh, for Tri-County Health's retiring employees. Um, PARA itself has uh, sought to have the counties, each of the three counties of Tri-County Health, to be responsible for that liability going forward. Um, it is our position that uh, there is no county responsibility um, to pay that. The county has never been a part of PARA. Uh, we've never been a member of PARA. None of our employees have been a part of PARA. And therefore, we have no financial responsibility to pay for Tri-County's employees when Tri-County chose to be a part of, of PARA. Um, we have had uh, that case litigated. At least one judge um, has ruled that uh, the statute does indeed not allow PARA uh, to require the counties to pay for Tri-County health uh, dissolution and the costs that that may incur uh, as far as PARA is in as far as Paris involved. So I think that answers the question. Thanks, Mr. Pratt. Uh, just wanna make sure anybody in the room who wanted to ask a question, anybody here? Thanks for being here with us, you guys. We'll go to an uh, online or phone question, Roger. Commissioner, let's go to the phone and hear from Jim first. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, good afternoon and thank you. And uh, welcome to Colorado, Mr. Hill. 
my question is this um, it's not just Douglas County but you know not the, the school district didn't do it but many of the infrastructure organizations within our state can't find good qualified leadership in the state of Colorado of six, almost six million people we have to go out of state to hire for DIA for RTD for for our new health department I don't understand that I understand don't understand why we can't find good qualified Coloradans, especially with the great health care systems we already have in the state, uh, not to diminish Mr. Hill, but holy cow, why, why can't we find people in, in the state? Why do we have to do a nationwide search every time you know, a, a, a high-level position comes open? Thank you. Let me turn that to our uh, Chair Doug Benevento. I, and and, that, and that's a really good question. Um, and it, uh, it gives us the opportunity a little bit to talk about the process we went through to, to hire uh, Mr. Hill. Um, you know, the, the caller is right. We, we, we have the commissioners have made an effort um, to uh, not only to try and source um, workers out of Douglas, uh, out of Colorado, but are here in Douglas County. Um, we, but we wanted to do a nationwide search for the director to, you know, give us as many options as possible. We wanted to be able to say that we did a nationwide search, that we looked at the best candidates we could potentially uh, find. Um, and, you know, hey, ideally we would have had somebody right here in Douglas County or in Colorado. But after we went through an extensive interview process, um, it was clear that, uh, you know, Michael was head and shoulders above the rest of the crowd. And he was going to bring the knowledge and the commitment um, and, frankly, a a, a philosophical approach to public health um, that exactly matched what the commissioners and, and what I were, was looking for. So, you know, the, the caller makes a great point. Um, and ideally, we, we will do things in Colorado, in, in Douglas County, uh, whether it's contracting or whether it's uh, hiring employees. But what we're not going to do is um, we're, we're not going to seek the best for the county. Um, and by the way, people kind of want to come here. Um, you know, we're, we're attracting good talent here because people want to live in Douglas County. So um, it's a great question. Um, I think we, we, we looked in, extensively inside the state, but Michael stood out uh, head and shoulders above the rest. Thanks for that, Doug. And I, I would love to sing the praises of Michael Hill as well. I think we're incredibly fortunate. I think the I'm a fifth generation Coloradan, but the next best thing to being a Coloradan, I think, is a deep passion for Colorado. And Michael definitely exhibited that in addition to his 30 years of local public health agency experience. So I, I feel incredibly fortunate. Um, to have Michael on board. I know we have an online question, and let me just add, if you are listening online, if you press star three, uh, you can ask a question from your phone. But I, I believe we have an online question regarding septic tanks. Roger? We do indeed. Karen submitted this question. Does the new health department plan to make any changes in the near future re regarding permitting and inspection of the approximately 14,000 septic systems now under the oversight of the county? That's a really good question. Um, so for now, we are not making a, a huge amount of changes. We wanted the transition to be very smooth um, and keep, you know, installers um, making the progress that they've already made. Um, and we didn't want the trans transition to maybe stall business. Uh, so we haven't changed the regulation a whole lot. We essentially took tri-counties um, and made some statutory updates and updated the health department's name uh, and are moving forward with that. However, as the as we progress and make um, our name for ourselves, I'd like to do some changes to the regulation, but it likely won't be for at least another year. Any other uh, questions from online or the phone? Let's hear from Sean. Uh, Sean asks, he, he says, I'm sorry if this is off topic, but I'm really concerned with how much our property taxes have increased over the past few years. Can you tell me where that money is being spent and if the budget allocation is public for this department? So property taxes, that's a topic that lots of people talk about and it's complicated and not everybody understands that. So Douglas County collects the taxes, if you live in Douglas County, for many different entities. So it all doesn't come and stay with Douglas County government. A big portion of that goes to the school district. If you live in a metro district, like in Sterling Ranch or Ravenna or Bell Mountain, uh, Founders Village, they have large metro district fees. 
I live in Highlands Ranch, so mine's only, I think, 11 mils. So mine is small. So it, it, you can go online to douglas.co.us to the assessor's website. And that page, you can put in your address. And then you can scroll down to tax entities and you can see exactly how much you pay in property taxes and how much goes to the library district, how much goes to schools, how much goes to law enforcement. Um, so that's really the first place that you need to go. Um, there's a lot of talk about property taxes going up significantly in 2023. This year was a reevaluation period where the assessors looked at the property sales for the last two years to determine what the value of your home is. And if any of you have been paying attention to the real estate market, in Douglas County, houses went up an average of 50%. So if you were paying taxes last year and this year on a $500,000 house, in the same house in 2024, in 2023, you could be paying, in 2024, you could be paying property taxes on a house that's worth $750,000. The legislature hopefully next year will tackle this problem because the voters repealed Gallagher a few years ago. That was the ratcheting effect that kept property taxes in line so that you wouldn't experience these huge gaps. But your question was about the budget. Douglas County has what's called open budget. So you again can go to the Douglas County website and look at open budget and you can drill down. It's our checkbook. You can see how much each department costs. You can see how much each department has spent for each topic. I don't know of any county that is more transparent than Douglas County. And if there's a question you have that you can't find it for yourself, ask the county, send an email to Cora that's C-O-R-A at douglas.co.us. And within three days, we will answer your question because we are very transparent. We have nothing to hide. You will see that we were paying Tri-County Health $2.5 million a year before we left them. Right now, Michael Hill has the budget at $2.5 million with 41 employees. By the end of this year, we will be providing every service that you need from a public health department. Just to put that in perspective, last week the commissioners were meeting with the 10 big counties in the state talking about budgets. What kind of things are we seeing in the future? What kind of raises are we giving our employees for next year? Adams County announced that their health department will have 170 employees with an annual budget of $15 million. So put that in perspective, Douglas County, two and a half million, 41 employees. Certainly there's a difference in demographics. I think there's also a difference in the ideology of what we believe government is. So I hope I answered your question. If not, call back or send the email to Cora at douglas.co.us and we're happy to answer the question. And I would just add, I mean, that's a, a wonderful question for commissioners. Part of our duties, in addition to sitting on about 15 boards apiece, is managing a, about a $511 million budget on an annual basis. And I think what's important for citizens to hear is that we are out of debt. As of this year, we have a balanced budget. And this last year, we issued the largest tax credit in the history of Douglas County, reducing that mill levy to by 1.25 and returning $10 million back to citizens. So we, we get it. We understand that um, while it's good in some ways for your home values to appreciate that you're also feeling it when it comes to your taxes. So we're sensitive to that. Commissioner Thomas. Roger, I think you have a phone question. We do. Let's hear from Chase. Chase, go ahead. Yes, I've worked in the healthcare field for about 25 years, and I've heard elected officials talk about how they're going to improve the mental health facilities and the capacity for mental health patients. I've never seen an improvement, but I do hear the cheering pretty much every election year, but by the second year, it's gone. And I'm watching it you know, get worse day in, day out. Wondering if we're actually going to do something about it this time. Well, I certainly hope that we can have a big conversation about this because five years ago, Douglas County launched its first community response team. 
This was in response to a horrible case that happened in Douglas County in 2014, a young man with known mental health issues. His mother was working with the county trying to get him help and he fell through the cracks. Um, he ended up taking his mother's life and then his own in 2014. After that, Douglas County decided we were going to do something different, and we, we have. Right now, we have six community response teams that are available throughout the community. That involves a specially trained law enforcement officer with a PhD level clinician. We have two of those four teams are dedicated specifically to kids in schools. Those kids, th those community response teams, the youth response teams, deal with children, parents, and the schools to help that kiddo get back on track. Uh, our suicide numbers dropped in 2020 and 2021 from the previous years. And so Douglas County has a very extensive mental health program. We have another project called the Care Compact where we work together uh, several different disciplines with an individual who has mental illness. And when we all work together, we get better results. I'll just end with the commissioners have dedicated about $9 million of our ARPA funds for mental health projects. We will be partnering with All Health Health Work to create a walk-in crisis center in Douglas County, 24-7 and 16 beds for adolescents. So, sir, send, send me an email at the county and we can answer your question. And if you have other questions and you're listening, hit star three on your key panel to get your question heard. Hey, it sounds like we might have another online question, Roger. Do Mina asks, uh, what do you see as the greatest challenge for public health in Douglas County? I love it when everybody looks at you for the difficult questions. I mean, it's it's the challenge, obviously, this year, I'll cheat and say, is just forming a new health department from basically nothing. There were two employees when I got here. Now there's about 25. So right now, the biggest public health challenge is just building a public health department. After that, the next challenge is that we're such a healthy county that finding the places where you can use leverage to improve things is gonna be challenging. So we know there have to be little pockets of less healthy people. So finding them, figuring out how we can work with them to make them healthier so that we all get to the same level of healthiness that the county enjoys, that's gonna be the next challenge, I believe. Let me add on to that if I can. Um, so I think Michael hit it about right. I think there's a couple of things that I would point to that I think are going to be really important for the county moving forward. One is something Michael mentioned is health disparities. We are a healthy county. Look, we're a we're blessed to live here. We're a healthy county. We're a rich county. We have there's there's a lot going for Douglas County, but that doesn't mean there aren't disparities within the county and there aren't people who are in need of public health services inside the county. And that finding them and getting them connected with the proper services and the right information is going to be a challenge, but it's something that I think we're dedicated to doing. When I was at the state health department, we did this. Uh, we started the office of health disparities. We started that office because we, Colorado was, you know, Douglas County was a, is a microcosm of Colorado. We knew Colorado was healthy. We knew there was a lot going on and a lot of good going on in Colorado. But we also knew that we had high rates of certain chronic diseases. And what we wanted to do was start pushing information out to people so that um, they could uh, they, they could also join the rest of the state in, in, in being, you know, the most healthy state in the nation. And we're one of the most healthy counties in the nation. I think the other issue that we need to focus on is risk communication. And this is particularly true, I think, after having gone through two years of COVID. How do we properly communicate with the public, um, you know, public health information? That's really important. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've said this before uh, that we, we, our job is not to compel people to do things. Our job is to provide people with information and then let them make decisions about how they want to use that information, um, you know, or not. Um, we are not. We are, we, are not, we are not here to force anything upon anybody. What we are here is to provide information. We are here to provide um, guidance. If people choose to take it and, and run with it, that's great. Um, but it's, we, are, we need to communicate risk in a manner that people can, um, uh, people can use that information as they see fit. Great, so it sounds like we might have another online question, Roger. 
You bet. Let's hear from uh, Carla. Carla asks, what protections can you offer from unlawful government mandates regarding health care or uh, public health? Well, I'll touch on that briefly, and I'm sure uh, others who, who tried to manage a global pandemic uh, locally for two and a half years will also have an opinion. But I'll just say as, as one county commissioner, one of the biggest challenges was uh, seeing some measure of overreach and just perhaps having, you know, one size fits all mandates that were inequitably applied to citizens in this community. Um, you know, our focus as county commissioners during the pandemic was to keep Douglas County free, open, allow people to continue to thrive in their businesses um, and move forward in a way that was productive, but also safe for them. Um, what will help us most in the future is having a local public health department um, that will provide that local control. I think the other piece too is just having good data. Uh, I, I will tell you that during that period, there were those that would say, look, there's thousands of kids dying in Douglas County. Why aren't you doing X? But we would point to our dashboard, our public health dashboard that we reviewed with the experts on almost a daily basis, if not um, intensely on a weekly basis. And we'd say, well, look, we have maybe one minor that has passed away uh, in a year and a half while extremely significant and very sad. You know, that minor had a comorbidity and that is the metric was one. Um, so having really clear data points um, is critically important. And I think uh, Mike Hill has made it uh, a big priority to ensure that we have great statistics, metrics and data that inform the decision making. I don't know if you all had more on that or anybody. Did anybody else have more on that? Okay. Roger, I think you have a phone question. I do. Let's hear from Dustin next. Go ahead, Dustin. You're live. Hello. My question is, what do you guys see as um, the new board's role in addressing the homeless uh, population that I'm starting to see on the outer edges of uh, Douglas County? And with the, the way the homelessness is expanding, what, what will you guys do? Well, what would your involvement with that be going forward? Well, I'll touch briefly on the Douglas County Homeless Initiative, and I know uh, Mike Hill is engaged uh, with our initiative, and then maybe you all would like to talk more about what you've seen and how you'd like to apply that in Douglas County. But um, we do have a Douglas County Homeless Initiative with one purpose in mind, to reduce homelessness to functional zero, not increase it, but reduce it to functional zero. Uh, the way we do that is by leading with the four C's, which um, really begins with leading with compassion, we don't want to just, uh, you know, criminalize those that are facing a housing crisis, but right behind that is code enforcement, the second C. So we do invite law enforcement into this process. We fund the police. We don't defund the police. Uh, the third component is community services, and we're really proud of our heart team, the Homeless Engagement Assistance Resource Team, which has already been incredibly active in the community, engaging with people that are um, panhandling, which may be a little bit different, or people that are also experiencing homelessness and they've been able to clean up abandoned camps. They've been able to provide people services. So if you're seeing less individuals in your medians and corners, um, thank your heart team. They're doing a really wonderful job. And that is um, very similar to our co-responder team in the mental health space where you have a uh, navigator paired with a peace officer, at least a peace officer responding in concert um, with that na navigation team. Um, the fourth C is communications and what you will begin to see is uniform signage throughout the county um, that has been adopted by our cities and towns that say three things very clearly. Uh, the first is, please, please do not hand money out of your car. We have really compassionate citizens um, that want to do the right thing, that are conflicted at intersections. Unfortunately, when you're rolling down your window of your SUV and handing $100 out, um, that does not diminish the amount of panhandling that only increases it. So I know it's a compassionate desire, but um, the second part of that signage is do give to a trusted resource, which is our Douglas County Community Foundation. Uh, very similar to, I call it the Red Cross of Douglas County. So that's a trusted resource. They give money to nonprofits and food banks that will actually get to the people in need. Um, and finally, that signage is going to say, call the heart team. So if you see uh, a family with a baby and a median and you're concerned, um, not a good idea to stop traffic and get out of your car, but please call that heart team who can engage with law enforcement 
and ensure that issue gets addressed. So ultimately our goal, um, our current point in time is about 78 people experiencing homelessness. That's a low number very low compared to Denver and El Paso. So we feel like we're ahead of the curve. We can nip this in the bud now. Uh, and next year's point in time will be very indicative in terms of how we've done. Um, but from a, a public health standpoint, did you all have anything additional? I just wanna say that, that I'm involved with your initiative, the homelessness initiative, just to provide advice where I can in the areas of, of you know, physical and mental health and substance abuse issues that might impact homelessness. And, you know, not everyone who's homeless is a drug addict or mentally ill, but some are and many have physical health problems. So I'm just there to try and find ways that we can improve people's situation and help them move along out of homelessness. Is it getting close to a polling question? Oh, online question. All right, thank you. Meg asks, have the commissioners reconsidered George Teal's place on the Board of Health after his anti-LGBTQ comments? We have not. Well, and, and let me speak directly to that issue. Um, I don't want to dance around it. Um, we did have a Pride Fest in Douglas County recently. And what is always, I think, fascinating and compelling as a commissioner is when you see consensus around a, a tough issue. And people from all backgrounds, regardless of where you're at, um, all agreed that there were a couple of incidents that were just not family friendly. Um, whether it was the exposure, exposure of prosthetic nipples or lyrics that were sexually suggestive, um, that's really not consistent with a family-friendly event uh, that would be appropriate for, for young people. And both the organizers and, and people protesting the organizers agreed with that. So uh, I think the entire board is really pleased that um, there are, there's an agreement uh, with the organizers to ensure that youth are not sexualized and that there are community guidelines in place um, regarding this particular event to ensure that this doesn't happen again. And they also issued a pretty significant apology. Um, I don't want to speak for Commissioner Teal. He's doing a good job representing us at the IBTA conference for Roads and Bridges in Austin um, right now. But that's the value of having three different commissioners. Um, we don't just have one. We have three uh, which provide uh, different opinions and different insights. So um, I, I don't get the sense from Commissioner Teal that he is anti-LGBTQ. Um, but what he has clearly stated in our meetings publicly um, is a desire to, to see family-friendly events at our at our fairgrounds um, we, as a board we've certainly um, landed on the belief that 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 pride fest in the future can be family friendly uh, and i think there's some consensus on all sides around that so more to come um, i think george provides uh, valuable insight i'll just do a, a quick follow-up on pride fest i have met with the organizers from pride fest and and they want to have a good event so people understand who they are and celebrate with them. So we're gonna continue working with them to make sure we have a good event. And I think we're getting close to a polling question, Roger, and this is a good question and we want your input. So please participate. All right, we sure do. Uh, here's your polling question. It's easy to participate. All you have to do is use your telephone keypad to enter the number of your response. <clears throat> and if you're participating online, you'll be able to record your response uh, on the web viewer. Here's the question, which health department service are you interested in learning more about? Press one for environmental health, press two for vital records, press three for mental and behavioral health, press four for injury prevention, and press five for disease surveillance and prevention. Go ahead and record your votes now. We'll share, or go ahead and record your votes now. We'll share the results with you in just a moment. And I think we'll go back to now, uh, Commissioner Layden. Great, so it looks like we do have a couple of phone questions. Roger? Sure do, let's hear next from Irene. Irene, go ahead with your question. Hi everybody, thank you for taking my call. 
my question is, where are we stand in Douglas County with this new BA4, BA5 COVID variant? And also, can we mix Moderna and Pfizer vaccine for this variant? Thank you. I believe the BA5 variant is the predominant in Colorado and in the nation. And I also believe, and I'm looking at my epidemiologists and nod their head, that it is allowable to mix and match the COVID vaccines if you so choose. Okay, it looks like we have a an additional question that came in earlier online. Um, Sam indicated injury prevention uh, was mentioned as a top health department priority. What is the department doing to prevent injuries? So as with mental health issues, there already are things going on in our county to address injuries. Particularly there's activities like, uh, you know, car seats programs, that's, that's injury prevention, bike safety programs. There's also groups going around and working with seniors because senior falls are a big portion of this injury prevention activity. What we're gonna do is, is bring up a health educator who's gonna go around and try to add to those efforts to be going out to groups, providing education to people, helping them understand how they can protect themselves. Because again, our health department is not about making you do things or telling you what to do. It's about leading you to the information. And if you choose to use it, then so much the better for you. We, we'll, help, we'll help everybody, but we're not here to make people do things. So again, if you're online and you want to uh, have a question, press star three on your keypad. We got a question earlier from Samantha wanting to know where she can get a birth certificate for her child because she needs to get a passport and without that, without a death, a birth certificate, she can't get her passport. So Mike, can you explain how people can get birth and death certificates? And then I'm going to add something when you're done. Sure, Commissioner. So you can get birth and death records in person at our office at 410 South Wilcox Street, Monday through Friday eight to noon and one to four thirty you can also fax in orders you can go online there are two online services that you can choose from and for a fee they will process your credit card and your order information and then we'll send out the birth or death record but the, the fastest way is just to come down to our office we've got two ladies sitting there waiting to uh, to help you with your your needs for birth and death records I'm just gonna add that recently my mother contacted me and said, I need to get a death certificate. Do I need to call a funeral home? And I said, I'll take care of it for you. So on my lunch break, I drove down the street to our health department next door to Catholic Charities, went in, asked for the information, and they said, well, there's just a pending death certificate available. The final's not done yet, but if you fill out this form and give us your information, as soon as the final one is filed, we will reach out to you. And it took about nine days because that's how long it took the coroner. But I got an email from Katrina saying, the final death certificate is ready. If you let me know when you'll be here, it will be ready for you to be picked up. I mean, what personal service? So if you need a birth or a death certificate from anywhere in the state, come here to Castle Rock and you'll get first class service. Thank you, Mike. And we have an online question. All right, Commissioners, this question came from Mike. In light of past adversarial approaches last year concerning COVID, masking mandates, vaccine mandates, et cetera, among the various tri-county responses, does this department have a plan in place should cases increase in the coming months? Yeah, we, we do have a plan, and we're going to be working at our next meeting to work on uh, dealing with the issues of who has the authority to issue public health orders at need. And we'll be rescinding the current public health order from last year that was set to expire at the end of the year anyway, but we're gonna just go ahead and expire it since it's not relevant right now. But we, we do have plans. We have a whole emergency preparedness planning program and people whose job it is to do plans. So we, we feel that we're ready. 
You know, I'm going to just touch on that briefly. Um, walking through that phase of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, I saw something very stark and very clear, and many of you did as well. I think our citizens picked up on it right away. In one camp, you had individuals that were reacting in fear to case counts. And on the other side, you had people reacting with courage to severity. So we really tried to bifurcate between case counts and severity. When we saw increases in deaths and hospitalizations, we wanted to react with courage, find ways to keep people safe, but also not shut down our entire economy. Um, there were those that thought we needed very broad restrictions when there were a high number of simply cases, but not severity. We disagreed with that, and that did create a lot of challenges for us. And again, one of the beautiful and, and exceptional solutions, I think, to facing a pu potential public health crisis in the future is having local control, having a local public health department with great leadership like you see here um, from my colleagues here tonight that will really reflect your needs in the future. So I think we have a phone question, Roger. Yes, we do. Reed is next. Go ahead with your question. It's not really a question. I am a 60 year old Colorado native, Grand County, Denver County, four kids in the Douglas County school system. And I just wanted to compliment you all for transparency and getting things rolling. I wanna wish good luck to the new health department. Thank you for a really great meeting. Keep up the good work. So much for that, sir. That's very kind. We appreciate that. Hope your kids are doing well. Commissioner Thomas. So Mike, here's a question that we've heard a lot over the last few years. So most people in Douglas County have personal health insurance where they get their personal health care. So what exactly does a public health department do? So one of the core functions of a public health department is assurance. That's to assure that the public has accessibility to services, including clinical services like immunizations and family planning and other services. So it's not necessarily required that a health department provide those services, but that we make sure the services are available. So we're working with a partner <clears throat> whose contract is not yet completed, so I can't name them, but we will have a contracted clinical partner who will be available for those people, and it's a few people only in our community, but those people will have access to services in Douglas County. Thank you, Mike, for that, uh, dis that distinguishing difference of the two. And Roger, do we have some results from our poll question? We sure do. We ask, which health department service are you interested in learning more about? And 38% uh, said mental and behavioral health, 36% voted on disease surveillance and prevention, and 17% said environment, uh, environmental health. Great, thank you for that, Roger. Uh, it looks like we might have another question that was submitted earlier online. Um, so this comes from Nick. Are you still monitoring and reporting COVID cases? What other diseases do you monitor and where can I find the data? So absolutely, we're still monitoring COVID. We have the contract with Jogan Health and the contact tracers and case investigators are still in action for any cases that come up. We also monitor all other communicable reportable diseases in the county. We have a staff of epidemiologists who gather that data, interview people, find out what's happened, make suggestions on what to do if you've been involved in a case of some communicable disease. We have a good start of a dashboard for COVID-19 already up and running on our county website. We'll be doing the same thing with the other reportable communicable diseases in the county. So at some point soon, you'll be able to go and see case counts for every disease that we're tracking in the county, and you'll know where things are going in Douglas County. You know, thank you for that, Mike. And we got another question, and I know this comes up a lot, um, and you've touched on this a bit, but with regard to restaurants, I mean, restaurants have been interacting with health departments probably more intimately than, than most entities, and we certainly saw some challenges for that industry during COVID-19. Is there anything you wanted to share? 
So um, we've already started doing restaurant inspections. Uh, we started that on September 1st, actually. Uh, so we have a staff that is going out and doing risk-based inspections. Um, we take into account what kind of food they're serving, how much of it they're serving, um, and how well they do on their previous inspections. And we either see them either every three months, six months, or once a year, uh, depending on how well they do. Um, Obviously, there has been quite a few uh, struggles following COVID-19, and one of our goals is just to be very accessible to our restaurants and provide whatever guidance we can to help them continue serving our community. Uh, and for anybody who wants to start a new restaurant, we'd love to help provide guidance, um, do their plan review, and help them get up and running. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Roger, is there an online question? Let's take a question from Donna. She asks, what is the budget to support the Douglas County Health Department for 2023? So I'll do that one. So we're currently developing the county budget, and this will be the first budget for the health department. So I've committed that the, the county taxpayer contribution won't be more than $2.5 million. We also have nearly a million in fee revenue that we can have. We have have close to 2 million in grants coming through from the state. So while the budget for the department may look like 5 million when you review it, there's still only the 2.5 million that's coming from local taxpayer dollars. I'm really interested in letting Doug Benevento talk a little bit about his experience and how where he's taking it. So, Doug was the executive director of the State Public Health Department, CDPHE. He's a Douglas County resident, so we are so fortunate to have him here as the president of our Board of Health. And so one question that came in ahead of time is beyond what is required by state law, what services do Douglas County residents want most from their health department? Doug? Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so the commissioners um, had the foresight to set up a task force to look at public health and, and what public health services the county should be delivering as they were contemplating pulling out of Tri-County and establishing a county health department. So um, they asked me and uh, others, several, several others to sit on it. And one of the first things we did was um, do a community health assessment. We basically went out to the community um, and we asked them, you know, thousands of community members what do you want to see out of a health department we know we know what the what the regulations and what the statute says with respect to core public health services but what we want to know is what do you want to see because one of the um the commissioners had this nailed right one of the reason to start a county health department to break away from Tri-County is because while regionalization and the provision of services at the local level may work for wastewater treatment plants and may work for landfills, it does not necessarily work for um, public health services when you're dealing with different demographics. What Adams County may need and what Douglas County may need are going to be different. And this competition for budget dollars about what services were going to be provided, frankly, didn't make Adams County happy, didn't make Arapahoe County, and, and frankly, wasn't serving Douglas County residents very well. So what, what we wanted to do then was determine what do Douglas County residents want? Um, on top of the list was behavioral health. Um, we know that that is an issue in Douglas County. We know that there's a, a we know that there's suicides in Douglas County. Um, we know that uh, drug abuse and other mental health issues. I think mental health issues were the top hospitalization issue in 20, 2021. So we knew right away that's something we wanted to focus on. And perhaps tie, and tying back to an earlier question about why Michael Hill, this Californian, is that Michael Hill, in fact, had um, extensive background in behavioral health. We knew that he could step in and he could immediately start addressing a top issue um, that, county re that, re the count that county residents were concerned with. Um, second was injury prevention. Um, you know, it, it's, 
but basically slip and falls are a significant issue in Douglas County and Michael talked a little bit about it, but that's something we need to address. Um, you know, in terms of hospitalization, that's something that um, is a is a big issue for, uh, for the county to deal with. And then there's management and prevention of, um, of, of disease, uh, of diseases. And that's also a core public health function. So we'd be doing that anyway. But the county wanted the county residents were interested in making sure and this was in the midst of COVID. So it made sense that that would be one of their responses, but wanted to make sure that we were in a position to track, assess and manage uh, communicable diseases. And also, I think start addressing chronic diseases as well by providing information to people. So those are the those are the those are what we learned from the county uh, when we did when we did our community health assessment. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, the robust discussion and engagement. Uh, it's near the end of our time. I'll turn it to uh, my colleague, Commissioner Thomas, to wrap us up. Thank you. So I, I think that what's important tonight to remember is how far we have come from over two years ago. So in July of 2020 is when I made the motion for Douglas County to leave Tri-County Health and phone calls from tri with tri-county were full when douglas county had meetings to discuss public health the room was full and it was full of angry people on both sides but what i'm really pleased from having heard from our community for the last hour is that our residents are looking through the windshield they're not looking in the rearview mirror not they don't care where we have been they want to know where we're going. And I hope that you have heard us talk about our plans that were based in what you all told us from the public health improvement plan and the CHA, the community health assessment that we did, uh, the advisory board we brought together with seven individuals who talked with us and guided us as we created this board of health and our public health department. Um, we haven't not provided any services. We have provided everything that we need to provide because we want Douglas County residents to have the public health services that they want and that they need. And if there's something that you all think we're not providing, let us know because we didn't decide we're gonna you know, cut corners and not do this and no, we wanna have a very robust positive health department. So I'd like to thank all of you for being here. If we didn't answer your questions, reach out to the county and we will respond back to you. We want to be very transparent. We want this county to remain the third healthiest county in the entire country and the healthiest county in the state of Colorado. Thank you, everyone. Well, and I would just uh, fi have some final comments to say that um, maybe we'll get back to first in the country in terms of healthiest county in the nation. We've certainly had that distinction and appreciate it. But, um, you know, back in July of 2020, I was sitting as a chair of the Board of County Commissioners, and I really want to recognize the entire board, uh, both of my colleagues, because leadership matters. Um, it's not just a motion, it's a second, and all three of us voting um, to do something that had not been done before for our county. But what we knew and recognized from the experts is that 49 out of the 64 counties already had their own local public health agency. It was not a new animal. We just had not done it. Um, but the pandemic certainly uh, made it very clear to us that it was time. So uh, it was okay to take the arrows and the, the challenges that came. Uh, I'm really thrilled that the decision has moved forward in, in the right direction um, on time, under budget, with the uh, continuation of services and, and no gaps for our citizens. So very excited about more to come. Again, thank you to everyone here on the panel, all of our guests, both in person and online. Uh, it's almost seven o'clock. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you. Commissioners, on behalf of Douglas County, thank you for joining us this evening. If we did not get to your question tonight, we invite you to submit any question on any subject at any time to douglas.co.us forward slash citizen connect. We hope you'll join us again for a future town hall and we wish you a very good evening.